Hey, this is Doug Field along with my co-host Brent Macy, and welcome back to our final segment of Healthcare uh, Consumers and Radio. You know, Brent, they say they save the best for last. I think in this case we did. Uh, you talked about, you asked me about innovation in the first segment, and I think we're about to hear on this segment about what I see, innovation on steroids. And uh, uh, joining me on the program today is David Strand, CEO of Life, Life Nexus, who is doing some very innovative things around putting personal health information in the hands of consumers. And, David, we're glad to have you on the program. Good morning. Great to be here. Good morning. Hey, uh, David, for our audience, tell, uh, give our audience a little background on Life Nexus and, and uh, what you guys have just launched with the iChip. Well, thanks. Our, our product, uh, Life Nexus, is one that um, is focused squarely on uh, the consumer mm-hmm. and trying to make sure that we're equipping every consumer to be a better consumer of health care, making health care easier for them and more convenient. We've just launched a new product earlier this year uh, that um, does a variety of things. Um, first and foremost, we ensure that your personal health information is available uh, when you need it at the time of care. It's a terrific problem uh, for most Americans, uh, never having the information they need available at the right time, and as a result, um, care is often compromised, it's not safe, uh, they experience poor quality, and certainly have a, a worse experience. So that's where we start, It's just making sure you've got that information available uh, whenever you need it um, and, and where you need it. But we go beyond that. We provide reminders of care that you need as well, so you don't have to really keep track of this anymore yourself. You know, we're all used to actually getting better service sometimes from our car dealership than we do from the healthcare system. And one way we can help with that is just making sure we track for you what you need and then reminding you of, of that care when it's needed. Yeah. We also, um, when we do identify care that's needed, we'll let you know where to go, uh, who the, the closest and best provider is uh, near you, and then finally uh, can add to that um, uh, really information that gives you a, a, a good picture of what your financial responsibility will be so it's no big surprise for you when you've um, actually um, received care. So the whole focus of the organization is to use uh, new and innovative technologies to really make healthcare easier for individuals and equip them to be better consumers. David, when you work with uh, partners like Health Plans and, and other partners that you work with, what's the biggest challenge that that you together have in getting the consumer to participate? Well, I think the biggest challenge is really just making sure that you're doing um, engagement right. Um, what we really believe is that. Um, Engagement is not just uh, throwing a new app at somebody. There's 40,000 healthcare apps in the marketplace today, and very few of them actually have ever been used. And of those that have been used, very few people actually keep using them. The, the lesson in this is that you've got to go beyond making something fun uh, to get people to stay engaged. And we really have grounded our product in the behavioral science of engagement. That means that We've made sure that we get people to yes, that is, we get them to participate. We figure out ways to sustain that participation. We make sure, of course, that we do have the the tools for them to to manage their care, which is an essential part of it, but it's only part. Then we try to help them with self-efficacy, really giving them the knowledge, the skills, and experience they need to continue to improve. And then finally, we make sure that um, they see the results of their work, the results of their engagement, so that they can see that healthcare is better for them, uh, better quality or better experience or whatever is important to them. They actually can see that, and uh, it's tangible to them. So the best way for us to do this is to really understand that engagement requires that kind of foundation, if you will, for the product and making sure that the product reflects each of those elements of engagement, and that's what we've done at Life Nexus. David, this is Brent. One of the things that, um, you know, it, there's tech, there's innovation taking place all across this marketplace on how to get, you know, your employee population to be better consumers of health and health care. What, what, what trends do you see in the market? What technologies do you see in the market that are really uh, encouraging this innovation drive out there? Well, it's really an exciting time for anybody uh, who's uh, experienced in the healthcare system because there's so much, um, actually more change happening now than any time in my 30-year career. And I think most of the changes we're seeing are really good ones for consumers. 
Uh, right at the top of that list is the information and technology that's being developed um, and disseminated to healthcare consumers now that we've never had before. Uh, the healthcare system's tough. It's tough to understand. It's tough to access. It's tough to navigate. And sometimes we just don't have the right information to make right. good, informed choices. Well, all that's changing now. Now we are beginning to see technologies out there that make it easier to understand what's happening, uh, easier to get into the system, navigate it, and help you make choices as you're going through the system. So all that's coming. Um, you see technologies out there, for example, that are helping uh, the elderly stay at home longer, which is great. Technologies that allow you to monitor your health um, uh, and uh, track that, uh, your health condition over time. Uh, diagnostic uh, technologies that help you uh, understand your condition better. And then, as I said, a variety of technologies that are providing the kind of information that you really need in order to make good choices. So it's all coming right now, and it's coming harder and faster than I've ever seen um, uh, uh, during my career. Yeah, I would I would actually agree with you, David. This is Doug, uh, and 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 to go to from from an information technology standpoint, and even your solution, it's it, it is also about tying everyone together. I mean, I that's mean, it, right. That, that's right. And I think one of the things that um, you know, they're having systems of care. Um, uh, are really important for the, the care that's delivered, for the experience you have. And what our technology does is it creates a system of care for each individual that's consumer-controlled, uh, that, that they, they really are the, the, the person or the individual that, that provides uh, access to that system. Um, and it creates a systemness, if you will, across all the spirit uh, places that they might experience, whatever physician they're going to, whatever hospital, whatever employer they have, insurance company, when all that changes, what's constant with our technology is they keep getting this, the information that they need in order to manage their care better. What is the value to the physician specifically of, of what you're doing? Well, the value to the physician is really high. In fact, we just completed a survey of 330 physicians around the country. And uh, quite remarkably, we found that better than 90% of the physicians um, who were exposed to our product and the record that we provide said that this um, technology would help them diagnose and treat their patients. It would help them communicate better with their patients, help them coordinate care better, and lastly, importantly, provide a better patient experience for their patient base. So um, all of those things, of course, are essential to better care. And so at the end of the day, um, they really said to us, this is going to improve quality of care. It's going to reduce our administrative hassle that we have with the system, and um, it's going to promote the kind of experience we want for our patients. So it was terrific to see that validation of the product from now, the, the it, community. With the, you using the cloud you know, uh, uh, technology uh, for updating, it also makes it easier for the physician and the consumer to keep this updated too, correct? That's right. In the past, um, a lot of the personal health record efforts have failed for a couple of reasons. First of all, I've asked consumers to do too much. Um, so in our case, we pre-populate your record and we update it dynamically so that you've always got a current record with you whenever you show up at the doctor's office and in between uh, mm -hmm. visits to the doctor when you may want to access that information. Mm -hmm. And secondly, importantly, uh, and, and very different than what's happened in the past with some of the better known efforts to do this, including Google Health, they had no way of bringing the information forward at the time of care. Mm -hmm. And in our case, we have uh, figured out a technology and a process that allows us to make sure that your record is there right when you show up at the doctor's office. So our view of it is if you can influence the dialogue that's happening between a physician and a consumer by making sure they're speaking the same language and have common information to talk about, um, you're going to promote better communication, you're going to promote better care, and that's what we're after and, and, and we think we've solved here with this product. David, we've got a couple minutes left in this segment. One of the one of the things that I wanted to make sure our audience understood is how do they – there's multiple ways this is portable. It can be put on a, a health savings account card. Is there other ways that, that the consumer can bring this along with them? They can. In fact, what we've done is designed this so that we can meet the consumer wherever they're at on the technology adoption curve. Mm -hmm. You know, we understand that there are people who have better access and, and understanding to certain technologies. So we certainly um, we can put it on a card, as you mentioned. Um, it can be an insurance card, for example, that replaces your current uh, insurance card. Uh, and it can also, as part of that card, be 
an incentive card, payment incentive card, so that mm-hmm. we can integrate with a wellness program that an employer or a plan might have, and can also be integrated with your HSA or FSA account. It can be carried on a phone uh, as a mobile app. Uh, it can be carried on a tablet. Whatever the consumer is best for them, we've designed it so it works for them. And then at the other end, designed it so that it works wherever the, their doctor or their provider is on that same technology adoption curve so that they can use it, whatever works best for them in their, um, in their office. Now, David, we've got about a minute left. and want to give you the opportunity to kind of give the audience one or two takeaways and um, let them know how they can find you guys. Well, thanks. I, this is, uh, we're really excited by what we're, we're doing here. Um, I think that at the end of the day, our, um, our effort here is to really equip individuals to be better consumers of this new health care system that we're creating uh, throughout the country. It's an exciting time. You can find us at www.lifenexus.com um, and access us there. But, but hopefully uh, very soon uh, you will see this technology showing up on insurance cards in your market and we'll have it available uh, to every consumer in the country. Well, David, thank you very much. Love what you guys are doing. We really appreciate you joining us uh, on the program. To our audience, uh, we will be back with you next Friday at 11 o'clock for uh, another show of Healthcare Consumerism Radio. But until then, everybody have a great weekend.